Kashmir is described as the paradise on earth, but decades of conflict has turned this pristine landscape into a battered zone. And what it has damaged the most is the very soul of Kashmir, its people, especially the women and children. Every woman in this village lard in Gandharbal follows this regiment every morning and Shafika is no different. Her day also starts by fetching water from the nearby well. The only difference is that Shafika is a widow and life is very tough as she has to look after a family of eight members. She is not sure for how long her frail body will go on to bear this burden. Dardpura, some 115 kilometers from Srinagar, is another village where being a widow is very common. Dardpura couldn't have a better name. Dard means pain in English and Pura means a board. And this village is indeed an abode of more than 300 widows who are constantly in pain with limited resources, difficult access to rehabilitation schemes and an intimidating environment that has left the widows with insecurities and helplessness. Most of the widows are ones whose husbands were insurgents and were killed in anti-insurgency operations and a good number of widows whose husbands were killed on suspicion of being informers for the troops. As they look back moving through time, they are haunted by a feeling of loss. So much has been surrendered and to such little purpose. There have been mad willful rejections, monstrous forms of torture and denials. The origin was fear and result has been degradation which they had sought to escape. When we ask them to share their plight with us, they are more than willing, thinking, talking to us might bring someone to help and take them out of this situation and end their miseries. We can't make out what this woman is trying to say. But we can surely understand what she wants to convey. We are facing the hardships for the last 20 years. I have not been happy even for a single day. My husband died 11 years back. I have seven children. My eldest daughter is married. After her, I have a son. He was in 10th when he went to Punjab, but never returned back. I don't know where he is. I'm facing many hardships. It is better for me to die. Shafika finds it difficult to keep the pot boiling, to feed her six children and her mother-in-law. She is lost and uncertain about her children's future. It is very difficult for her to provide her children with food and education from the help that she gets from a Yatim Trust where she is enrolled and receives two months ration and some money. And this is surely not enough for a family of eight. When asked what she has cooked for her family, she said ha. Saag is what her family will have along with rice available from the cooperative shop. My husband died eight years back and since then I'm dependent on charity from people. They give me food, clothing. I have never money to buy anything on my own. I want my children to study so that they are able to help and bring money. My eldest son is handicapped. He was operated five times. He is very irregular in school. I want him to study. Primary education is free, but after that, I have to provide them education. I don't know how I will manage all this. Shafika's family is not the only family that has to make difficult choices for survival. Years of conflict has deeply affected people's livelihoods. According to a survey, significant groups of women and children have become widows and orphans as a result of death of their husbands, fathers, who were sole bread earners in their families. 
It is the children of Kashmir who have felt the impact most severely. A whole generation, not just those directly involved in the conflict, face an uncertain future. Many had not even been born when the conflict began in 1989. The living conditions of these children have become worse as there is no systematic and continuous financial support to them. And the only option left is perhaps to send them to orphanages. My father had gone to masjid to offer prayers when they took him out from the masjid and killed him. My brother went to see what has happened and he saw my father's dead body. My brother came back and told my mother that my father is dead. I could not see my father's face. I could not bear it. Then my mother called up my father's friend and told him to bring us here to study. I like it here. I don't want to go home. I'm able to study here. I'm learning many things here. I didn't know anything before, but now I know everything. My name is Asya. I'm from Bandipura. I have come here to study. My father has passed away. When my father died, my mother married again. My paternal uncle got me here. I have two brothers and one sister. They are also studying. After 89, situation altogether changed. Now, uh, around 100,000 uh, people have been killed, both men and women. Out of them, nearly uh, 100,000 orphans uh, have come to being now. But we have categorized them into three categories, these orphans. One of the categories is of those orphans whose father was an earning hand and he had a government job or he had a private job or he had some other source of income. So uh, even if he has died, he has left behind that source of income which is uh, recurring to the family. Another category is of those orphans who though they do not have any source of income but there is a caring uh, guardian in, in their families say the uncle, the maternal uncle, elder brother or somebody else who takes care of these families. Then there is a third category of those orphans who do not have a source of livelihood in the family and they also do not have any caring guardian. So uh, this uh, category of orphans is nearly 30,000 of them. This is the uh, challenge which, which, we, which we have uh, to face. There are believed to be over 100,000 orphans in Jammu and Kashmir and these figures are most threatening to the economic and social structure of the state. The orphanages and aid centers that are operating in the valley are working to meet the survival, protection and developmental needs of the orphan children and widows of the state. Their goal is to bring these children out of the cycle of violence and turn them into productive members of the society. But most of the time, it is not enough, as the number of these organizations is very small and minor in comparison with the need. The lack of appropriate information also leads to ineffective monitoring systems. Mustasan, a six-year-old, is the youngest among all and has yet to comprehend fully the tragedy that had struck him. 
आई हैव कम हेयर टू स्टडी एंड वर्क हार्ड वेन आई ग्रो अप आई वॉन्ट टू बिकम अ डॉक्टर और अ टीचर आई विल टीच और फंस एज दे डोंट हैव मनी If I become a doctor, then I will treat orphans because they don't have money. जिंदगी को नबी से मिला दे फॉर दीज चिल्ड्रन द डे स्टार्ट्स वेरी अर्ली एवरी मॉर्निंग दे वेक अप बिफोर डॉन ईदर फ्रॉम ड्रीमलेस नाइट्स दैट मेक देम ऑलमोस्ट एन आई मर्ड ऑफ डेथ और वन ऑफ दोज नाइट्स ऑफ हॉर एंड मिस हैप एंड जॉय वेन थ्रू द चेंबर्स ऑफ द ब्रेन स्वीप फैंटम्स मोर टेरेबल देन रियालिटी इट सेल्फ ग्रेजुअली दे फिंगर्स क्रीप थ्रू द क्विल्ट एंड अपियर to tremble the black shapes dumb shadows crawl into the corners of the room and crouch there at least for now their childhood looks secure as there is some development and some sense of duty towards these displaced children however much remains to be done when it comes to the systematic implementation of these standards as these efforts are largely in isolation देखिए बच्चे जब यहाँ आते हैं तो वो डिफरेंट लोकेटी से आते चिल्ड्रेन कम हेयर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट प्लेस देर वेज ऑफ लिविंग आर वेरी डिफरेंट जब वो यहाँ आते हैं तो उनको इनिशियली इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू हैंडल देम बट वी हैव टू समहाउ मेक देम एडजस्ट टू दिस न्यू एनवायरमेंट बच्चा यहाँ आया था पिछले साल तो उसका जो बैकग्राउंड था वो आप उसका अंदाजा इस बात वन चाइल्ड हु केम लास्ट ईयर डिड नॉट इवन नो हाउ टू ईट ए बनाना He started eating without peeling it. I perceived he had never eaten a banana in his life. उसी वक्त ये perceive किया, observe किया कि शायद कि इसने कभी केला खाया ही नहीं है. So we uh, started a scheme of dietary assistance. This was our first scheme which we introduced. That we are going to provide dietary assistance from the mash stick to the rice, all domestic items which are needed in a family. we provide uh, them so we uh, started registering the such families identifying them and then verifying them and then we have nearly 3000 such families in the whole uh, 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 kashmir who have been identified and who are being provided this assistance dietary assistance in the form of uh, all domestic items monthly and on regular basis I am very poor but I am very thankful to this trust who provide us monthly ration and money they provide us oil mat stick soap tea leaves and 700 rupees jahan main rehti thi wahan ek there was a girl where i used to stay she told me about this place she told me if you don't want to marry again then this trust will help you मदद के लिए मैंने कहा मेरा गजारा कैसे चलेगा तो दैट्स हाउ आई केम हियर आई हैव थ्री चिल्ड्रन देर इज ऑल्सो सब्सटैंशियल अमाउंट ऑफ अवेयरनेस अमंग द पीपल इन कश्मीर वेन इट कम्स टू गिविंग चैरिटी in terms of food clothing and money especially during the month of ramadan which is the holy month and everybody donates generously but the problem is much larger than just giving them food clothing and shelter the circumstances that they are in has brought with it another devastating and more permanent damage that of mind being homeless and deprived of parental love and care has left the small minds disturbed and depressed kehne ko to bezuban hote hain aansu lekin kya waqi aansu bezuban hote hain 
کہ آنکھوں کی دہلیز کو پار کر کے وہ صرف اس لئے نکلتے ہیں کہ مٹی میں مل کر فنہ ہو جائے کہ آنسو ہمیشہ بے مقصد بے مرادی ہوا کرتے ہیں کہ ان کی کوئی وقت اہمت مقصد نہیں کہ آنسو کو صرف نمکن پانی کی چند بوندوں سے تجبی دی جا سکتی ہیں آمدہ ذرا آپ دیکھو ہمیں کس کس میں ہوں وہ ہیں چلو میں ڈیری نکالتے ہوں فاصلی میں دیکھوں گی Sometimes I want to cry. It happens that when everybody is around and they are happy and smiling, that time also I want to cry. Sometimes I think my dreams will never get fulfilled. Then also I cry. It's not that I have any problems here. But there are times when I don't want to share my feelings with my friends or mothers of this place. Then also I cry. My heart feels lighter. جب پھر میں صرف روتی ہوں اور مجھے جو یہ ہارٹ پہ جو بوجھ ہوتا ہے وہ تھوڑا سا کم ہو جاتا ہے رونے سے بیفور ایٹی نائن دے ایز ایہا آلیڈی منشنڈ دے آرفن بائیس اور گرلز دے یوز ایٹ ایہا سمالر ٹائپ آف ٹراما دیار فادر ہے ڈائیڈ سو دے فیملی ہے آلیڈی ریکنسائلڈ دے تھارڈ دیٹ سنس ہی کین نوٹ کم ناو بیک دیار فور دے ریکنسائلڈ دے Uh, of their own out but now uh, the, the, the the population of orphans which we are facing now they are having uh, such a type of trauma that we, which is which is uh, quite difficult i mean uh, a girl who lo- uh, or a boy who lost uh, her or his father because of natural death they thought well he, he was um, he was diseased he was having some ailment therefore he died he had to die but what about uh, a man a father of some orphans who went for uh, getting a living outside and in the morning he went for a living and in the uh, evening his dead body is brought to the family what should be the uh, level of trauma in the, such a family they were not prepared for such a death They were not absolutely prepared for the death. This was a bold from the belief for the family. And they are not coming out of the trauma. We have a girl in our orphanage. Uh, her father was killed in her presence when she was a small chap. In her presence, her father was killed. Now, she is not absolutely ready to come out of that trauma. This family has seen and borne it all. Till eight years back, it was a sumptuous, happy family when one day, the sole bread earner fell to the bullets. It was a case of mistaken identity. He left home for work and never returned home, leaving behind wife, four small children and old mother. For the children as if losing their father was not enough, they also lost their mother to cancer a few months back. Now this old woman sits reclined to the door every evening waiting for her grandson to return home. Her eyes brimming with tears and displaying a very rueful look, peeping thoughtfully into her worst past for the valuable asset in terms of her son and daughter-in-law, whom she lost to the gore and grisly happenings. Hardships and trauma and no money. What will my grandson do? How much can he do? He has to bear the burden of the entire family. I feel very sad looking at him. He is too young to take this responsibility. I feel very scared when he's out on work. I cannot rest until he comes back home safe. I dread if anything happens to him, who will look after his sisters? <laughs> The conflict that started 13-14 years back has destroyed many households, rendered many families homeless, given rise to countless orphans and widows. We are among those families and I am one of those orphans. I know what an orphan child goes through when he suddenly loses everything at a young age. It is very painful. 
پیچھے کوئی آسرا نہ ہو تو کیا گزرتی ہے کس طرح وہ دن گزارتے ہیں کس طرح وہ رات گزارتے ہیں مانو قیامت گزرتی ہو ان پہ After speaking to orphan boys and girls, one thing is very clear, that they don't want to miss out on their education. They want to learn. They have a dream of making it big and help their family. And that's what they come for in the orphanages. But there are many cases where the organizations have found themselves in difficult financial situation with regard to supporting children in their higher education dreams. This has a negative impact on the already delicate psychology of the children. I feel that whatever we little we are doing, it is absolutely not enough. Nobody can claim that it is enough. Because where you have <coughs> cries around, you have lamenting and weeping around, every family is destitute and disturbed in such a a circumstance how can you claim that whatever you are doing is sufficient even the government cannot do it there has to be a massive awareness and a, an a, a community based social support system a strong social support system in the community based no orphanages can be a remedy for the, the for the problem for the this trauma for this all difficulty it's only the uh, awareness it's only the awareness that has got to be generated and then the society has to be uh, brought around <laughs> Out of the unreal shadows of the night comes back the real life that we had known. We have to resume it where we had left off. And there steals over us a terrible sense of necessity for the continuance of energy. A vile longing it may be that our eyelids might open some morning upon a world that has been refashioned anew in the darkness for our pleasure. A world in which things would have fresh shapes and colors and be changed to a world in which the past would have no place this is the kind of life we dream of and this is the kind of life we want Kashmir, 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 Kashm